wear long pants because there's a lot of snakes around here apparently. Just don't tell Joy. Anyway, all good. We didn't see any. Lots of butterflies, millions of them, no snakes. Just been into the butterfly cave in Kamilara. There's a bit of a sketchy four-wheel drive track coming in, but well worth it. Smaller four-wheel drive would be easier. But um, yeah, pre prepared to get a few pinstripes down the side. We came in the north track, which is very unkept. Apparently the other one is a bit easier for on the way out. Definitely would be easier with a smaller car and uh, it's pretty sandy, it's fairly tight. It's I recommend at the end, um, yeah, there's a big sandy patch there, maybe park before you get right to that turning circle at the end. We're going to the left. We came in on the right track, which was pretty sketchy. This one out here, I think is gonna be a little bit easier. So down that track, pretty tight. And go around the corner here. Ivanhoe Crossing. So the crocodiles in there. Welcome to Kananara. This is Kananara. There's quite a nice parkland here. Kids playground over there. Bit of a rotunda up there. A few signs to say what the trees are. Yeah, quite a pleasant little spot and caravan park over there. Now while in Kananara, I've stayed at the Ivanhoe Village Caravan Resort. It's right opposite the showgrounds. Now the showgrounds are a bit cheaper if you can get in. Generally there's caravans queued up here by 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning waiting to get in and it's booked out every day. Just across the road, we've got the, say the Ivanhoe Village Caravan Resort. Yeah, they've got cabins, swimming pool, adventure playground, camp kitchen, free barbecues. You can book tours and that here. It's, uh, and pets are allowed. So it'll suit a lot of people. And I think it's um, a bit cheaper than a lot of the others in town. Probably not quite as modern as some, but the yeah, showers are good and staff are friendly. You've got a lock gate to get in here, or boom gate, should I say. But yeah, all in all, good place to stay. But yeah, it seems pretty busy here. It's a very reasonable price. So there's plenty to do around Kalanara. Uh, when you're at a caravan park, you do not expect to see Air Force trucks coming through. Right, there you go. See something new every day. A couple of chains around that one. I uh, wonder where they're going to pull up camp. Shit does happen, and when it does, you deal with it. Yeah, I'm in uh, Kananara Caravan Park, and it's the first time I've separated the doors for a while. And another one of these is broken off from up here. Kind of do the gear, but I think it'd be safer to have all three of them. Don't know if I'll be able to get another one up here, but... Um, so uh, we'll see how we go. Just wondering, is $29.95 the regular sort of price to pay for them? I thought that'd be a bit cheaper than that. But anyway, it's just me. It is what it is. You gotta buy them when you gotta buy them. Oops, mess. I quickly found the culprit. 
and not looking forward to cleaning up my container of milk which is a bit smelly and about half empty so got to take all those cartons out of here I thought it was a good thing having a lot of milk in here but there is a puddle of milk in the bottom here so I'll have to go through and see which ones are oh, it's a little bit smelly in there which ones are not leaking and see where the milk has gone obviously it's come into under the fridge and I'm worried about it being in under that bed as well looks like I've got a bit of a clean up to do oh dear we have milk under the other bed I'm going to, have to clean that up and hope it doesn't keep seeping through from under that um, chipboard. I hope it hasn't soaked into there too much. I thought it's time to clean my solar panels. I had to get the ladder out, so getting a bit more stuff out. Alright, we'll see if I get a bit more solar in than I was. I'm an unpowered site. They've got powered, unpowered sites. Right, I came up here and I noticed my antennas broken off, gone. So I hadn't noticed that before, but I'm glad I came up here to clean these panels because this screw was just sort of hanging in. There's two screws that are barely holding this in and there's uh, another two missing. So I'll go and check the other side. Look at the back there, you can see that well, what screws are left, there's only three there by the looks. Or all loose too, so check your solar panels guys. This is before I've been on the gib. Really scary that actually there's I'm so close to losing that panel. I mean look at that. It's, it's, uh, I don't know what's really holding on. Maybe one screw slightly in there. Uh, that's scary stuff. Yeah, time to do a bit more checking around the maintenance I think minor breakage on our fusion lock. Normally these things last really well. It's um, for the toilet roll holder and it just slips over there. A bit hard to do it with one hand but um, yeah it will sort of sort of stay there and but no it's going to fall off. Anyway just another minor issue. Just done a little maintenance job reattaching this clamp on here it wasn't uh, actually screwed into the chassis at all and yeah put another bolt in this one hopefully good to go so to check wheel nuts uh, again a couple of them were slightly loose and put the spare tire back on the, the beast so back to the original one on here so yeah hopefully all good for the gib That's uh, why I'm getting this white powder all the time. The top freezer seems to be better. But yeah, obviously that's going to be moving as I'm driving. It's quite a bit of movement there, as you can see. Yeah, this door was closing perfectly yesterday, but um, yeah, not so well today. I'll still be able to lock it. It just doesn't sort of push in, so whether are they hinges are bent there or something I can't see anything but I'll be able to lock it for travel and and check it out at the next stop as at the moment I can open this cupboard these two I haven't been able to get open for a while there's nothing in there I need actually so I'm not too stressed but yeah I can take the screws out underneath here and uh, so I can get access to them it's just um yeah they just not opening <laughs> The regular way at the moment so yeah just another little issue no big deal good morning i've just aired down my tires and i'm on valentin spring road heading up to valentin springs and it's all open good news is there's a crater on the road so i went in there the other day only six k's it was a bit bumpy so I'm guessing the first part will be quite smooth sailing. Uh, after that, 
I don't know. So anyway, it's big corrugations. So I've left Kununara over here and I've driven out to Valentine Springs and I'm just going up to the other side of the crossing and then continue around this four-wheel drive track, uh, well, Curry Creek Road and there's a couple of spots you can camp along there and then uh, come out this way to Wyndham. So I'm not sure how long that'll take me, I reckon I'll stay overnight somewhere. Anyway, that's a general plan. Uh, just a few are going down to the west side of the Ivanhoe Crossing, don't take your caravan right in. You can get down there with a the four-wheel drive and there's plenty of room to turn around, just the um, height is a bit of an issue if you've got a high caravan. If you've got just a camper trailer you can squeeze through probably, but I'd rather park up the top and walk down. Only a couple of minutes. It's the Ivanhoe crossing from the other side. Definitely wouldn't want to be driving across there. It does say be crockwise here, so I'm not going in the water or too close to it. I don't think there's any crocs in this rough part, but um, yeah, gotta be safe and sorry. Anyway, that's uh, the other side of Ivanhoe Crossing. Track into Middle Springs. Um, it was a bit tight and sandy in places. I haven't actually gone all the way because I've come to this little uh, water crossing and just going to walk it. No crocodiles here. I don't know if um, there's any point in bringing the caravan through. And there's no way I'd get the caravan past that tree around that corner. You'll see by the evidence that um, yeah, you're not going to get through there easily with the, the rocks and everything and yeah fairly high banks on this side maybe a camper trailer if you're lucky but, um, yeah, to me it's not worth it yeah I'm glad I parked where I did and walked in just don't try and bring a caravan in here anyway I am at middle pool and the last person just left so I've got to do it to myself Look at that. And there's a walking track up to the top as well. There's only a trickle of water coming down there, but, but oh, nice warm water and suitable for swimming. Very nice. Worth the drive in, I'd say. And yeah, check these pools out above the middle pool. No way I'd be swimming in here, to be honest with you. It's um, a bit green and murky looking, but uh, yeah, still a beautiful spot. Very nice. Imagine what it'd be like with a bit more water in here. Check this out. Swim above the uh, pool. Just gotta watch the uh, footing here a bit. Uh, here at Middle Springs you've got uh, a couple of picnic tables, one with shade, a bit of an information board there, no camping. There's an alternative four-wheel drive track over there that goes to Black Rock Falls, but only for four-wheel drive and high clearance vehicles. Anyway, back to the caravan. That's got to be lunchtime. That's Middle Springs for you. So, so far the beast and Hercules is standing up all right. This is Black Rock Pool. It says it's a 20 minute walk in there, but um, really it's five, 10 at the most. I could have easily towed the caravan in here. It's just uh, straightforward. But after the last water hole, I decided to disconnect and set up camp for the night. Again, the facilities here, you've got the shade, a couple of picnic tables, barbecue. 
Oh, check out these butterflies. It's a bit like the butterfly cave. Millions of butterflies. Those places that you can't really get an idea of how massive it is unless you're here. It's just huge. Imagine what the water would be like pouring over there in the wet season. Uh, this is where I've stayed at Buttons Crossing for two nights while I explore the area. Uh, there is um, a bit of a sand dune down there that uh, I wouldn't recommend going into unless you want to get stuck. Uh, there's a bit of a water feature down there I guess that um, people have dri driven through and got water over their bonnet. But yeah, the sandy area, someone got stuck in there just for the fun of it yesterday. If you drive there's a road that goes along the side there. If you go up there about another kilometre, there is actually a massive area with waterfront. It's actually a much nicer area to camp. So if you are coming in here, just keep going further. No crocodiles in here that I can see. Yeah, you can get in, just take it slowly. It's just a few bumps and rocks and drop-offs and so on. So just, you know, take it easy. You'll get there, no worries. Check out the colours in the sky there. And we've got a bit of a reflection in the car. I decided to hitch the caravan up this evening so I can get away a bit earlier. Yeah, probably should be careful doing that. I just uh, took a bit of a chunk out of my hand on the taking the jockey wheel off. This is a nut hanging out from the stone guard there. I just got my hand caught on that. Anyway, lesson learned, I'll be a bit more careful next time. Oh no. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, bugs everywhere. Oh, what am I going to put on? Tea tree cream. Mozzie spray. Oh no. Must be getting in the fly screen. Oh.